Here at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, work is underway to establish a permanent place to live on the moon. And to find out how we do that, it's time for me to take one small step of my own. Oh wow, I can instantly see the dust kind of kicking up. Yeah. It's really fine, isn't it? It leaves the footprints like you'd expect. Oh my gosh, that's brilliant. And this is how moon dust behaves, it just like... It does, up like yeah, that. yeah, it's so yeah. fine. Welcome to Swamp Works. The dusty, dirty lab where they work with simulated moon dust. Now, the loose soil that covers the lunar surface is called regolith. It's extremely fine, very sharp on a microscopic scale, and it gets everywhere. So when we landed um, with Apollo 11, we didn't know what the surface of the moon exactly was going to be like. There was a lot of concern of how much will this land or sink into the surface? How fluffy is this regolith? Surface is fine and powdery. I can, I can pick it up loosely with my toe. In fact, it's because the Eagle lander didn't sink in as much as expected that Neil Armstrong had to take such a giant leap from the bottom rung of the ladder. Today, Swampworks is developing robots that can cope with and take advantage of lunar soil. And it will be very useful. See, moon dust is made of materials like silicon dioxide and calcium oxide, which all contain a lot of oxygen. If we could mine the regolith and use chemical processes to extract the oxygen, we could make our own breathable air and our own rocket fuel. The way spaceflight um, exploration has been working right now is, um, imagine you're going on a, a holiday with your family, you're going on a long road trip, thousands of miles, right? Um, you, right now, we are bringing a trailer behind us with all the gas, all the, uh, you know, that we need with us, all the fuel, everything that we need comes with us, right? So we want to change that paradigm. We want to, um, and one of the biggest things that, that makes the biggest impact is the fuel, right? If we can source some of that from the moon and eventually from Mars, that will allow us to bring more and to go more often. Now, mining moon dust is called ISRU, in situ resource utilization. And because they love an acronym around these parts, the robot to do this will be called the ISRU Pilot Excavator, IPEX. We had to really reinvent how you do excavation um, for, uh, for doing mining on the moon and eventually Mars. The challenge is the technology we have for mining here on Earth relies on a lot of mass and a lot of weight. We have to reduce the mass of what we put on rockets, and then when you land it on the moon, it weighs one-sixth of what it does here on Earth, right? Imagine like trying to dig as, as if you're on ice, right? It just, you know, scoot across the surface, the scoop will not engage, and you won't be able to collect anything. So the way the robot scoops up the dust is using this thing called a bucket drum, and it's got a kind of spiral in there. And if it turns it one way, it scoops the soil, which gradually works its way towards the middle and stays there like that and then when it wants to unload it turns it the other way and it all comes out again we put them on opposite ends of the robot and when it excavates it's using both sets of drums at the same time but they're digging in opposite directions so one is pulling it that way and one is pulling it that way right. and pulling itself down to the surface yeah. 